Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to another episode of the Trans Atheist Podcast. My name is Ariane, and I will be your host. Today we're talking about objections to atheism. This one in particular is the objection that atheism is hopeless. So according to Webster's Dictionary, hopeless is having no expectation of good or success. So this thought that being an atheist is a life filled with hopelessness is a pretty common view, especially among evangelical Christians. With a lot of these Christian objections, I'm just amazed that anyone can fall for them. But I actually want to give them credit on this one because I do understand where they're coming from. I was raised an evangelical Christian for much of my life. And while many have had it much worse, my life wasn't a bed of roses. I understand the utility of faith in those hard times. When life would get rough, I could believe that God had a plan and something good would come from this. When a loved one died, I could soften my grief by believing I'd see them again in an afterlife. It wasn't that I set out to lose faith. It just kind of happened. As I saw I had no good reasons to believe, I simply couldn't. It was hard to process the thought that no grand plan for my life, no eternity, and no reward was waiting for me at the end. For a time, I guess you could say that I felt hopeless. However, there was also nothing I could do about it, nothing I could do to change this new reality. While it may be easy to hold on to indoctrinated views so long as you protect them from reality, once they crumble, they're gone. Ultimately, I had to decide if logic, reason, and reality were more important than a comforting lie. I chose to follow through on the logic. Now, I've certainly found hope along the way, facts that gave me comfort. First, in the absence of some grand purpose for my life, I found my life has the purpose I choose to give it. I get to look at what's important to me and make those things my purpose. For me, that comes in the form of standing up for the LGBTQ community and myself as a trans person, attempting to make this a better place for trans youth, or at the very least, to let them know they aren't alone. My other purpose is found in my relationship with other members of the animal kingdom, especially those feathered members that I'm so passionate about. I see humans' evolutionary advantage as an amazing opportunity to show care, compassion, and love for those species that evolve differently. In knowing that we share this common starting point, that single-celled organism that developed from gases and minerals and elements that all formed from the same Big Bang, it helps me to see that these amazing diverse animals aren't separate from us. They're our cousins. They aren't like family. They are family. The fact is, I can't do anything about an afterlife. No amount of wishing and hoping is going to make it so if it's not. I can only control those purposes I give this life and whatever small impact I may have. My view that this is the only life I know I'm going to have motivates me to experience as much of life as I'm able and want. It focuses me to consider the legacy I leave behind when I'm eventually gone and to do all I can to ensure it's a legacy of love, passion, care, and boldness. Now, admittedly, it's not the same sort of hope religion offers. Religion gives us a prepackaged form of hope, one where some supernatural agent has everything all planned out for us. What I have is a humanistic hope. It's messier, a little rough around the edges, not so well defined and without a promised outcome. 
It places all the work directly on our shoulders without a supernatural out when things don't work as we had hoped. It takes much more work to maintain that hope, and it's harder to hold on to. However, in understanding that things only change when we work to change them, you find your motivation. And while I see no reason to hope for some heavenly reward in an afterlife, I find my reward in the camaraderie of a protest. The message from another person that something I said impacted them and the happy chirps of my little parrots when they see their human mama is back home from a day at work. Perhaps none of that matches your definition of hope. That may all seem insufficient for your life. Perhaps from your Christian vantage point, that may still seem hopeless. I'm certainly without hope if you're speaking of supernatural things. However, if hopelessness is having no expectation of good or success, as Webster defines, I'm anything but hopeless. I'm filled with hope because despite the many troubling things I speak about on this podcast, I still believe that humans are capable of greatness. We're a species that put a man on the moon, that develop vaccines to cure or prevent deadly diseases, that develop telescopes to peek into the far reaches of the universe, that creates beautiful art, music, and architecture. Yes, we can do terrible things, but for every Charles Manson is a Betty White. For every Caitlyn Jenner is a Laverne Cox. And for every right-wing bigot protesting a pride or drag queen story hour is a woman wearing a shirt that reads free mom hugs. That gives me hope. Thanks everyone for taking a few moments to listen to one of the shorter versions of the Trans Atheist Podcast, Objections to Atheism. Hopefully you'll come back for another episode soon and ending with my quote from Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down. Stand up, be proud of who you are, continue fighting. If you're an American, if you're in America, keep in mind that we are all citizens, regardless of our gender or gender identity, whether we're religious or non-religious, we all deserve equal treatment under the law, but we only get that when we're willing to fight for it. Lots of love, and I will see you at the next episode. Bye-bye.